welcome to the HTMI podcast. Today we have the pleasure of having Wendy Svedlov here with us, the president of the Canadian Tourism Human Resource Council. So thank you very much for being here today. So I got a lot of questions I would like to ask you, but first maybe to establish what's the difference between a tourism board and now the council? In Canada, the Canadian Tourism Commission is our national marketing board and their primary goal is to market Canada both domestically and internationally. The Canadian Tourism Human Resource Council is responsible for labor market issues. So we identify and help the industry to address the issues associated with uh, people who are employed in the industry and, and other labor market issues. Mm, okay, very interesting and very important. So could you maybe share with us what's the main roles, what, what do you, activities and so? The council was formed almost 20 years ago to address a gap in the education and training um, system for the tourism industry. And so where we started was with identifying the skills and knowledge that are required in frontline positions. We've moved subsequently to higher level positions and in the management arena. But we started with occupational standards, which identify skills, knowledge, and performance required to be competent in, in the job or the profession. And we moved then to professional certification programs. So in Canada, one can now become a certified front desk agent or a certified housekeeping room attendant. And then, a few years later, the small business portion of the industry said they loved the standards and they liked the certification programs, but they were unable, which is what we had anticipated in the first instance, to provide the training. They didn't have the time and they didn't have the expertise to provide training. So we then developed training products against the, that responded to the standards and that prepared people for certification. And those, and those training products are designed to be used in the workplace and, and they can be used actually for self-study. And subsequently, of course, the education system has adopted some of them and are using them in their programs, particularly with continuing education where they can offer something to the industry on a different basis than the pre-employment two and three year programs that, that they normally operate. Mm, okay, very interesting. Uh, so when you talked about this gap, is there like a lot of evidence that a lot of things have changed now since this gap? Well, there certainly mm. are materials now to fill the gap, and the, that gap is in um, is in the frontline positions. The tourism training, basic training for frontline positions, is obviously not offered at the secondary level in high schools. And the post-secondary institutions in Canada, those are colleges and universities, are teaching a management level. And so there was, there was a gap for the frontline positions. And that training was normally left to just an on-the-job, sort of mm -hmm. brief, learn-as-you-go kind of training. And what we've done is, is try to fill that particular gap. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, can you maybe say something more about the training and the uh, certification? And also you mentioned there is something online as well. Yes, yeah. there is. Um, we, and I'm going to take you back a bit mm -hmm. and talk about how we develop standards. Um, what we do is bring sort of experts in the field. So we will, if it's food and beverage server standards, we'll bring the best food and beverage servers together at the provincial level in small groups and at the national level and they set the standard with a psychometrician that sort of helps to guide them and then to write the standard. That draft is then taken back to the industry and validated by a wider group. And when that's done, then we develop a test against the standard and it too is developed with industry. They blueprint the, uh, the standards by saying, you know, the first section is more important and is worth sort of 10, should be worth 10% of the mark, whereas, you know, the second section is only, should only be worth 5%. And again, we work with testing experts and, and develop the test against that. Mm. I probably went way off your question mm. on that one. No, no, no. 
thinking about the labor market, what's the major challenges in, in the future? The major challenge in the future will be our demographic situation in Canada, and I know that applies in some other countries too. And that is that we failed to have enough children 20 years ago, and so there will be not enough people in Canada to fill the jobs going forward. We expect it got very bad in 2007, 2008. The economic situation has caused um, the economy to contract a little and therefore it's not as bad right now, but we expect it to get worse again in about 2013. Mm. And so from that perspective, we know that the tourism industry is going to have trouble finding mm. people to do particularly the frontline jobs. And so our issue will be how do we get the underrepresented groups in the country into the tourism labor force? How do we attract them to tourism as opposed to construction or mm -hmm. to mining or other sectors that might look appealing as well? Mm -hmm. And uh, so some of those underrepresented groups in Canada are the Aboriginal communities, mm -hmm. which are under, they have many people who are underemployed or unemployed. Um, people who are retiring, because that is, we have a very, a, a, a very aging population. There's a lot of boomers around who are about to retire. How can we get them into the industry when they might like to retire? Mm -hmm. And uh, people with disabilities and recent immigrants. And I think that the largest pool that we're going to have to draw from are recent immigrants. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I think here we could probably conclude that very often the tourism industry is not taken seriously enough. So what do you think are the reasons for that? There definitely has been and we think will continue to be an image problem around particularly frontline jobs in tourism. And very often I think people don't think of the higher level jobs or the opportunities that there are for small businesses, mm -hmm. for entrepreneurship, and for very interesting and exciting jobs in hotels and restaurants at the senior level. Um, so one of the jobs we've had to do over the last 20 years is to try and improve the image of the industry. There are a lot of people who are very happy in frontline positions mm -hmm. and that those positions help them. And particularly young people in Canada, we think one in three have worked in the tourism industry mm -hmm. and they've done that to pay their way through school. Yeah. Um, we have employers in the industry who often seek summer students from other post-secondary faculties like law or science because very often parents have talked their kids into going into law when actually they'd far rather be out with the folk in a tourism business. Mm -hmm. And uh, so then again, those are our challenges. How do we find the people who really would be good in mm -hmm. our sector and who would enjoy it way more than the sectors that they have perhaps think they yeah. want to work in? Yeah. Yes, because looking at the big picture, I found out that around 7% then of the employed people would be working directly or indirectly in tourism. But is there a recipe then to make the tourism industry more attractive? Oh, I wish. <laughs> if we had found a recipe, we would have fixed all of the problems, but we haven't found that recipe yet. Um, it's just constantly, I think, mm. reminding people that those frontline jobs lead in any direction you want. Mm. You can go up, you can go sideways. There are so many fun things to do in tourism. One of the other challenges is to persuade parents mm -hmm. that, they, that their children can make a very good living and a good future mm. in tourism. And that, too, is, is a bit of a challenge. Yeah, yeah because it is a global industry and the, the biggest industry in the world, according to, to some. It is, it is, and that's not always recognized. Mm. Um, tourism is something that we do when we're not working, and very mm. often um, it is, it goes unrecognized as a major economic generator, and obviously in some countries, not Canada, but mm. in some countries, it is the largest mm. generator, and I think in those countries they appreciate it way more than perhaps in, um, at least in Canada, where where we're not inclined to think of it when we think of oil and gas and forestry mm -hmm. and mining, some of the things that we're known for. Yeah. But tourism does employ almost 10% of the Canadian workforce. Um, okay, then I would like to go back to, because I also found out that you got an award in 2008 
for shining leadership in tourism and hospitality. So congratulations to that. Uh, what do you think about getting that award? It's wonderful to be recognized for something one has had such a good time doing. Um, I think in Canada this was, um, it was a new kind of a concept, what we do. There are 35 of what we call sector councils in Canada. Ours is the tourism one, and for once in tourism, we have the biggest and the best of those sector councils, and I think that the recognition came from having done something new, relatively innovative, and spending some time on the workforce, which is not often the case in tourism, where marketing mm -hmm. holds the, uh, the major attraction for most people. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then if I understood it correctly, there is another award coming your way as well. Maybe do you want to say something about that? <laughs> the University of Guelph, which has a tourism program, both Ryerson and the University of Guelph have important tourism programs in Canada. And we have worked with both universities over the years. And uh, Guelph will bestow on me, which I am very honored, privileged, and a little humbled by, an honorary doctorate in laws um, next June so yes wow that's wow is right I yeah, am, that's yeah, an achievement. I am yes. pretty pretty honored yes so is there any advice you would like to give to our students here that are becoming future managers that what's expected from a future manager in the tourism industry that's still changing very much again I would love to promote uh, the role of any supervisor, manager in tourism is, is largely a human resource role. Um, I don't know that it's recognized, it's given enough emphasis. And that is that in tourism you are always managing people. And those people are touching your guests. It is so important that managers do a good job mm -hmm. in the human resource area. Canada last year had around 16 million tourists. What do you think about the future for, for Canada regarding a tourism destination and looking at the challenges in the labor market? Well, I think the challenges for any developed country is the competition that is coming mm -hmm. from Asia as they develop and as they develop a middle class who will be able to travel. All of our challenges are uh, in attracting those markets mm -hmm. and I think that Canada is well placed for that. We have a product that is of, of interest. Uh, and then our challenge will again be a labor market challenge. How do we understand and serve people from cultures that we're not used to having in our country in large numbers? Mm -hmm. How do we learn enough of those languages and of those cultures that we serve them well? Mm -hmm. Okay. Do you think, uh, what's the, the strengths of Canada as a tourism destination? Are they going to be able to keep those strengths or? Our strength has always been, and I know we fought hard to uh, get away from the image of moose, mountains, and mounties. Um, I know the Canadian Tourism Commission has been focused lately mm. on the experience that one can have in Canada. Mm. You can have an urban experience as well as an outdoor experience, and that there are many, many cultures that have been absorbed into the Canadian landscape mm. that you can you can have you can experience in a Canadian way through all kinds of festivals events mm. um, and other kind of urban and rural experiences mm. so what we're known for is sort of the mountains and the mounties there is so much more and I think that will be our challenge mm. okay and probably a last question probably about tourism in general when we said that the tourism industry is struggling to, f to find the good people and then tourists on the other hand are not so keen to to pay a lot for the holiday. So do you think we are going to end up with some strange compromises in the future or are we going to be able to have high quality? That is a really good question and I am not sure mm. that I have much of an answer. Mm. Um, the frontline jobs have never paid as well in tourism as they have in some other sectors. Mm. In Canada, it is not as unionized as other sectors, and consequently, the wages have not gone up. But again, on the other hand, that level of our workforce is often people who will not stay 
and mm -hmm. our challenge will be to make their short stay in tourism while they pay for an education, mm -hmm. supplement family income, do whatever it is that those jobs are good for, mm -hmm. is how we make that experience a good one. I know that in the past we have heard from banks and they always love to hire people who have worked in tourism because tourism gives them that service um, mm -hmm. ability to, to serve a customer well and that is something that you don't always get in a program that has trained people to work in a bank and mm -hmm. yet they need it. All sectors need that customer service piece which is what tourism does well. So if we can recognize the role that tourism jobs play at the front line mm -hmm. in one, starting your career two, giving you that workplace experience that you can take to other sectors. And if our own employers understand that that's what they are doing and that the churn at that level is okay, mm -hmm. as long as they can pick out the ones that are likely to stay, figure out the ones who are going to make a great career in tourism mm -hmm. and, and treat them differently. Mm -hmm. move them through their organizations, mm -hmm. give them special treatment. Yeah, so also probably very much social responsibility inside the company for the Well, employees and also and it's their own responsibility mm -hmm. because they will benefit from that. Mm -hmm. If they can understand the ones who are moving through and give them the basics and then pick the ones who are likely to stay in the industry, maybe not their business, mm -hmm. but the industry. I mean, we have a saying in Canada, I mean, a lot of our employers will say, what if I train them and they leave? Mm. Well, our response to that is, what if you don't train them and they stay? <laughs> yeah. um, because, yeah. and yeah. you've got to recognize the ones who might stay and give them special treatment. Keep them if you can, mm -hmm. because that will be good Definitely. for both them and the business. Definitely a win-win. Yeah. Okay. So, thank you very, very much. I think we could go on forever and ever, but we will not. Okay, huh? But it's great. been a pleasure, so thank you very much. It's a pleasure for me too. I yeah. look forward to seeing nice the results. Nice to have you. Yeah. Yes, okay, thank you. <laughs>